Hello, this is Don Victor, author of Drawn to Win, host of the podcast Drawn to Win, the director of the Academy of Composition, and the creator of the Core 80 Experience, also known as the C and Grow Rich in Art video course, which you can find out more information at core80.com. This is the Drawn to Win podcast, where I have the incredible privilege to draw artists from around the world into fun and meaningful conversations around art and life, and yes, maybe even a little food. You can hear us each week on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and YouTube. So make sure you subscribe so you always have a seat among friends. Let's get into the show. All right, John, welcome to the show. And uh, so, John. Thanks. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, this man. Cool. <laughs> so uh, what, what, what are you working on now, man? Oh, uh, man. So uh, it, 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 it is a great question because it's a multifaceted answer, I guess. But uh, first and foremost, what I have rolling around in my head is definitely um, these group of, of images uh, that don't exist yet. <laughs> but I have them. In my, I have them in my head, and, and it's. I, I am looking for nature to kind of coincide with it, and uh, um, and I and so I could put it together and and, and create these uh, these paintings. Um, I know what the images are, and 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 it has to do with a, a, a foggy rain situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has to do with traffic. Mm-hmm. Um, it has to do with you know. Um, uh, being inspired by actually other artists as well and uh, older artists. And so particularly I have, I have quite a, a few favorites, of course, um, mm-hmm. like every artist does, I'm sure, you know, um, but I'm thinking of uh, 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 George uh, Innes, uh, even a little bit of George Bellows, mm-hmm. uh, kind of like the Georges, huh? Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to kind of, uh, do that but at the same time i'm also tackling drawing Mm -hmm. uh from observation um and also in a way it's i'm using that as a tool to kind of um loosen me up a little bit more Mm -hmm. actually um kind of uh i'm not looking to draw uh quote unquote pretty pictures Mm -hmm. i don't know if that even makes sense you know Um, total sense sometimes I don't know what a pretty picture is and, uh, and you know, I'll, uh, I'll definitely talk to you about that more because I think my, my wife knows what a pretty picture is and she, she helps more, uh, when, and, uh, when I'm looking to do something pretty, I guess, I, again, I don't, I don't notice that. So I'm, I'm walking around or I'm sitting or I'm just, I have a little sketchbook with me, uh, everywhere and I might just draw a piece of something or, uh, a small view of something and it's not meant to to even be shown in, in any way it's kind of meant to be uh, recorded somehow into my body if that makes sense uh, yeah, as well absolutely absolutely you know and let it um and hopefully I, I let that process work itself out on the canvas eventually with the, what i mentioned before with it, the, you're, uh, when you're saying with your wife you know looking at it uh, for pretty when you said that, what I thought about you knowing you for a little while, mm-hmm. um, I think one way we could describe it would be that pretty would be polished, right? And it could be polished, very, yeah. you know, like delicate. And, and with your energy, it's much more of a rough, uh, almost a messier type of energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, and you're really focusing primarily more on the energy, not the finished polished thing. And, at this yeah. stage, when you're in that sketching, drawing, loosening up, it, it's, you know, it, it's more about being in that moment and having that energy that you're seeing transfer to the paper, but also, like you said, record it in your own being. And uh, so I totally understand what you mean by that. Yeah. I, and I think you, you, you actually helped me uh, uh, a lot in this, in this phase as well, because um, like, it's almost like I could feel a, an area where I want to paint. If I'm uh, driving around or walking around, or, or uh, and I look at something and I'm like, yeah, something here. It and it's not quite, uh, 
you know, spelled out for me consciously in my head. So it's kind of like, yeah, there's, there's an energy here I want to try to capture, you know, and depending on, um, if I have the time, you know, I'll do a quick sketch, uh, or, you know, I take a bunch of photographs and I'll take a zillion of them, you know? And, um, again, I always mention uh, this idea with my, my wife is that I'll find a general area, but mm-hmm. she'll find the exact spot uh, mm-hmm. where I need to paint from. That's um, nice. But I think you, you, uh, you helped me as, uh, with that as well. Like you, you, you were able to say, I don't like some of my work and say, you know, hey, you know, maybe if you move this here, maybe you move that there. And, and, um, and, and that, that was, that was hard for me in some ways. Cause, uh, <laughs> cause I know that we, we talked about, you know, our famous, uh, you know, I, I we can't curse, right? Can we curse? No. Yeah, uh, we can. F, F for the photo, <laughs> you know, and, uh, uh, and it's true. It's like, oh, no, the photograph is not my master, damn it. So I got to sc- scream at this thing. and go, no, I'm going to put this truck a little bit further to the right. I'm going to move this sign a little bit to the left. I don't care if it's not there anymore. You know, and you definitely, definitely uh, helped me with that. Um, it was uh, kind of liberating. Well, and again, I'm, I'm continuing that with the drawing where I feel like, oh, well, I'm going to just move this now. And exactly. even if it's bad or good, I don't care. I'm just going to move it now as an exercise to to let go just hey i'm trying to create a, 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 a something i want to look at i want to i'm trying to create a work of art right and it doesn't and I'm have gonna, to I'm be gonna, a, i'm going to challenge you john you're not letting yeah, go you're actually gaining more authority and control yeah right you're yeah. not being controlled you're the one making the decision of where things are placed not being told where they're being put and yeah. so i will challenge your thinking that you're not actually learning to let go hmm. you're, you you know it, it's both because there is a freedom right. in it but it's really you're increasing your authority you're the one who's speaking this is the world I create. I am the God of this space, if you will, or the ah. king of this space. And therefore my decree, I decree that this thing goes here. <laughs> right. And that's where it goes. Right. Yeah. And, um, this is you- marriage. Okay, can I say that to my wife? I am the God of this. <laughs> <laughs> Strangely enough, we don't live in a world where people like to hear that, but ah. guess what? Guess yeah. what? If you go back to your sketching. <laughs> yeah. It, it, we don't want to hear that on paper, but in the core of our being, yeah. we want to be led, right? right? Let's be honest. Women right. want to be led by their men, not told what to do and bossed around, but they want to be led. And that requires a certain level of intensity and energy. And, um, and, and, yeah. and, and so, yeah, anyways, I, I do love, love the fact that you're bringing up that your wife so much because that was actually one of the things that we talked about, like, I don't know, three, four years ago when we met yeah. Yeah. and uh, worked together for a few months. Um, right. We were looking through some of your work and I think some of the photos and the ones that were, I remember us looking at some that were, that sold very quickly and they yeah. happened to be ones that your wife picked like out like her eye caught it but then yeah. you as the artist took that as a resource interpreted and did your artwork based on what that spot that she saw within that space that you were right. in right and uh and and i remember you know us having a conversation it was a bit of a challenge because you know um but I, I love the fact that you're so free about talking about that now and oh, saying yeah. hey man it's just part of who we are, you know, uh, right. I, I love that man. Right. So, no, right. So it's, tell me when you incorporate, incorporated her more in your process, I mean, you're still the artist, but now she's, more, you know, more of a conscious part of the process. Uh, how has she responded to that? Uh, well, she gloats a lot. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> okay. It, you know, cool. it's, 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 um, it's sort of a, a strange, so like, partnership in the studio you know uh-huh. um well I, i'll develop the work um for 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 quite a while you know i'll, I'll mm-hmm. develop the work and i'll get it somewhere you know and and i'll basically i'll just ask her for her opinion i was like what, what do you think and she's like oh you know maybe this maybe that you know um and, and i mean that's our that's our working method you know it's uh it, and it has worked in in the sense of sales yeah definitely it's uh, i get a little jealous sometimes because and I'm like, what the heck? You know, it's the ones that you kind of manipulate that you tell me, like, what, what is this thing that you have that, 
know, again, I feel like I show up to the general, uh, the general sense of what I want, uh, what I want to create. But she gives me the, she pinpoints exactly, you know, you know, the whole like, uh, I'm in the ballpark, but mm -hmm. she gets me to home base, you know, she gets me yeah. exactly to, this is, this is the spot, you know? Uh, so yeah, I, I owe her. <laughs> wow. That's beautiful. Man. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. You know, She's, it's, there's this, uh, in, I guess, evolutionary science or whatever you call it. Um, there's this understanding that, you know, we, we have the, the hunter gatherer mentality, right? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the men would go out and, and, and biologically we're designed for this thing to go out and singly focus on something, stalk it, kill it, drag it home. Right. 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 Um, and in a weird way, it's like what we're bringing is death to something <laughs> and in, in a very strange way. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's like we have to go and dominate this thing. Right. Sure. Where women, uh, you know, for whatever long period of time, uh, they had to, you know, they were the gatherers. And so with the gatherer mentality, they had to become very conscious of, oh, that bush has certain berries on it. Mm. I'm going to have to remember where it is, what it looks like, how long it took to get it, how to prepare it, like all these things, sure. right? Sure. Um, because if I'm wrong, I could kill my entire tribe. Right. Right. So it was right. like where the men had to carry death out to something. The women had to prevent death from occurring. Right. Gotcha. And so there, I think that's why we often say women are very intuitive because they, they're, they're bringing in so much information and they have to remember so many things that if they say, Hey, if you move this or do this or whatever, people mm -hmm. will like it more. They're probably right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. You know? That's, where, that's where we that's might like get a, focused on, uh, you know, I got to get the painting done, you know, right. like, you know, mm -hmm. are we going to say? Right, right. There's, that, that's exactly it. It's like, I have that, there's a sort of gusto, you know, like this is, um, it, it's sort of a rush to get, uh, to, to see the work, you know, in, <laughs> in many ways, I, um, I mean, I look at it as the, I, this, this might be a, a strange story to, to think about, but, um, I wanted to make pancakes for my family some a few years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, and we went on vacation. We rented a cabin up in North Carolina. It was a big group of us, and I was like, "I'm going to make pancakes." I looked up this incredible uh, recipe by uh, uh, buttermilk pancakes. It's, it's, they're they're pretty simple, but like you know, I, I found this recipe mm -hmm. and I followed it to the T. And um, and um, I made the rest, of, you know, I made these pancakes and everybody started eating and they were like, you know, giving me all these compliments, you know, like, John, these are great pancakes. And I was totally like agreeing. I'm like, yes, <laughs> they are great. They are great. But what was in my mind was the, the idea that they're great, not because I did it, but it's because it's a great recipe. Like it, it's like, I'm agreeing with them on mm -hmm. this thing all i did is just kind of put it together so in in a way in the studio or well, when i'm plain air painting you know like it's like i'm just trying to follow nature you know i'm trying to follow that recipe that is in front of me and i, I i'm just putting it together you know my mm. you know and it's it's this rush sometimes because i feel like a little kid you know uh, uh when, when i paint in many ways because it's like i I, I want to open this present. I want to see what it looks like. So mm -hmm. I, I paint with, I, I try to paint with a speed into, in which like, all right, let's, let's see what this looks like. And, and a lot of my, even my training um, over the years has been focusing sort of on this gusto, this speed to get to what does this look like? And it's almost like it's not me, you know, it's almost like there's just, I'm just following this recipe. I'm just this machine that's letting this happen, you know? Um, and, and, and there's that speed, but I know that in the speed, you can imagine the kitchen, right? If it's, if you're, you're making these pancakes, I mean, the, the, you get a flour, flour everywhere, everywhere, you get egg, <laughs> everything that just, it's thrown around everywhere, you know, but the final result is, is, is going to be a good thing. But, but you, you do, I think need someone, uh, to plate it, you know, and decorate it and, 
and you have it, it it's clean you know like it's it's it's, it's like you said polished yeah. you know so i feel like that's that's been my my uh See, that's that's an interesting analogy, man, because <laughs> it's funny, like if you bring in the, the concept of agency, right? Mm. And and what I do a lot of times with artists is I, I become more of like an art editor, right? So they're working on a product, right. kind of like what your wife is doing with you, right? right. But, uh, but where I have my greatest strength is in the beginning. So if we look at the, right. the, the cook, right? Like, let's say you're the cook, you're the chef, right? Right. Um, but before you start mixing your ingredients you can just like oh grab some eggs grab the powder it's all over the place blah 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 but what if you were able to take 30 minutes before cooking and mm. prep everything right? right so the amount the exact amount of flour is in a nice clean dish right and you knew once i put that in it's done it goes into the dishwasher right so like as you're cooking this beautiful experience you're also keeping everything very orderly and cleaned and and you're removing the chaos out of it Right, so the only energy that's yeah. really there is 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 the energy that the love that you're putting into it, and the in the in the magic that that's occurring in the cooking. Yeah, and then you hand it off to the expediter who can then decorate it and get it out to the people that need it, you know, to be uh, to, to to you eat it, you know. Or yeah, it's or a system, it. right? It's a, it's it's a system, like uh, mastering a system, you know, uh, or, or almost a formula of some of some. Of some way, even though we're we're controlling this lab, uh, mm -hmm. I have this uh, in my head now. It's an extremely popular book that's uh, that's been uh, out now. But I keep thinking of chaos and um, and order mm. uh, uh, with uh, Jordan Peterson. Yeah, uh, Jordan Peterson. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's like this. There's this uh, chaos, but you're like you know in order or or, or order in chaos, and and, and it, like my my gut, which is not necessarily a great place to make decisions from uh, sometimes, uh, my gut has been fighting that, 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 that feel traditionally. Like that, I don't, I don't want to uh, think about it. I just want to get to it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, like I, I find a, a space and I'm like, yeah, there's something here. I want to just start painting. But I have probably failed more than have succeeded in that in that thing you know and mm. kind of like uh we all know the st statistic of reggie jackson the new york yankees uh uh you know he he struck out more than anyone else you know uh even though he's got the most home runs so mm. in a way like that's been my my feel uh, mm. through this this thing you know it's like i'm just i'm just gonna do it i'm just gonna do it but yeah since i've met you for sure like i know that that's that that helps a lot um even like i gotta tell you when i first started painting like i didn't i had no organization whatsoever i mean even as a my palette like it, it was like you know oh what color do i need so here let me open the tube and put that color smack in the middle of a palette and just start painting and not realizing man you know if i place the, the right colors in the right spot before i paint you know, of course, that we, that's a common practice. We all do that now as, mm -hmm. as, as painters, you know. But in the beginning, it was kind of like that. It was this, this thing. So I think as I, as I progress, I, yeah, there is order before this, you know, kind of controlling the tornado. You know, I, yeah. I, I'm going to make the tornado go to the left. I'm going to make the tornado go to the right. You know, but the tornado is going to do its thing, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of like that. It's, 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 it's that. it's that feeling. Because, again, I always say it's like, I, I've been fighting it. It's almost I don't want that control, but uh, but but I realize it. It works. It totally works. Yeah, indeed, indeed, man. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That, that's yeah. beautiful. Thanks, that's thanks. beautiful. Um, so that's so you're currently working on this. Uh, not necessarily that you're working on a series, but you're in that beginning process of beginning to get clarity on your next series of of paintings. Correct. I I am. I am, and this and it's um, this is the first time um, that I'm taking uh, uh, I'm taking longer to do That's uh, these things. Yeah, because yeah. for a while, for maybe about the last year and a half, it seems maybe not, maybe not that long, maybe about that long, uh, you've been exploring these uh, rain scenes. Uh, through windshields and things. Well, that's um, exactly where I'm going. Yeah, I'm, okay. I want to explore it some more. Exactly. Uh, 
but I'm I, with these um, with these things that we just talked about. You know, exactly. Where, um, yeah. Yeah. So, so you, 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 you gave yourself the time and maybe this is part of your system to give yourself the time to do the, let's see what it looks like. And you do a couple of those to kind of say, okay, this is how it's done. Well, now how do we take that and actually take it to a place of artistry and mastery, right. uh, making sure that the soul is right. The energy is right. The story is right. The design is right because you know how to execute it. Right. 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 And, 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 and then, and then, from there, how do you polish it off right? Um, so, uh, yeah, man. It, it, That's funny. You know, I, I know that, that it makes total sense to when you put it that way. You know, like I've been thinking of it more like um, I'm purposely um, twisting the rubber band on the, you know, those uh, toy airplanes. Like I'm purposely <laughs> twisting <laughs> it funny. Yeah. and I'm grabbing, getting more and more energy. And I'm, I'm already, I'm starting to get to that point where it's like, all right, I'm going to have to let go of this thing because they're either yeah. going to break the rubber band or you know i you know i want to fly you know and uh, so yeah yeah no but the way, i like the way you put it better <laughs> when you feel the tension you think you're going to break it okay yeah don't let yeah. it go keep put keep keep winding it up okay sure. because oftentimes in life what will happen is the point in which we think we're going to break it's there uh, Sometimes I call it a demon, right? Uh, not not a demon, like you know, but just this 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 chaotic this thought that comes into us that that doesn't want us to succeed. And one of the ways it does is says, "Hey, yeah, man, you're doing good. Keep going in that direction, man." But uh, you know, now it's starting to feel a little pressure. So maybe this is the time you want to stop right. or release. And it's not telling you not to do it. It's just right. telling you to slow down. Or hey, you know, you, you might be winding that too tight. Um, do you play guitar? Very badly. Okay. <laughs> Me too. Me too. I, I just, it was just weird. Like I remember when I, uh, I don't play guitar, but I, I try to learn it in the past. And I, Same. and I Same. remember the first time I, I, I was being all gentle or like when, you know, when you first start learning to do a massage, right? You're all gentle because you don't want to break the thing or hurt the person or whatever. Right. And, and then you see someone playing a guitar and they're like slamming this thing, you know? Yeah. And you're like, wait a second, this thing can handle it, you know, a right. person can handle a good massage, you know, whatever it might be. Right. Um, so, there, so that's what I want to encourage you, man, as you're going deeper in this, um, you're not going to break it. Okay. The, the goal is actually for it to break you so that this more authentic, truer, clearer frequency can come out of you and, and, gotcha. and, and they pour it into your work. So, you know, We'll wait till the bus goes by. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's a bit. Yeah, Harley yeah. Davidson. <laughs> oh, is that what yeah. it was? Okay, cool. So yeah, that's even better. Yeah. Yeah. So I encourage you in that, man. And, um, okay. and, 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 and keep in communication with your wife because she'll be able to tell you when the time is. She'll, she'll say, now now it's the time. Yeah. But, uh, but I'm yeah. proud of you, man. No, no, thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, no, yeah, I, I definitely, uh, yeah, that's definitely something I'm not letting go. You know, it's my secret weapon. Well, now it's not so secret. <laughs> <laughs> my wife. Well, you know. It's not secret, but you're the only one who can access it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if, if anyone tries to, you're going hunting. Yeah, um, there you go. <laughs> so, so, uh, so, John, let's, let's have a conversation about where, where little John came from. And uh, I'm not talking about the one in Robin Hood either. <laughs> Uh, what? <laughs> whole, isn't the guy li- isn't his name yeah, Little John? Like, okay, hey, Little John. <laughs> um, so, wh- when, like, when did you fall in love with uh, draw? You know, drawing, painting, art. When did you discover that in you? You know, um, I don't have. Uh, I have many possible reasons, and they probably all somehow work together mm-hmm. as to how this happened. And. Uh, it's a few things. So one, my, uh, my parents split when I was uh, three years old and, um, mm-hmm. my father would come pick me up, you know, uh, weekends, whatever. And part of our time, uh, on the weekends, uh, hanging out together is drawing. We literally just sat down to draw. Really? Yeah. That's awesome, we, man. That's, that's kind of what we did. You know, uh, he was a, he was a, a pilot, uh, uh, in Cuba, um, uh, a long time ago, whatever. But and uh, one of my uh, you know fond memories is that he would sit me on his lap, and he had this huge poster of a uh, DC. Uh, he used to fly a DC three, um, but this was a DC seven. Hmm. 
cockpit. And he would kind of walk me through the whole thing. Like, you know, sit me down on the, in a chair in front of this humongous poster. And he'd be like, all right, you're the co-pilot. You're going to, you know, we're going to press this button. And we're going to press that button. And, and like, I was fascinated by that. But one of the, oh, oh, one of the things I started doing is I started like, trying to draw the cockpit. Mm. And, you know, I would, on the weekend, he'd pick me up and I'd have this drawing all set up for him. And I'm, and I'm like, under 10 years old. I don't, I don't remember how old I was, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something that would happen often and he lived in an apartment building um and this is in up in new jersey in Passaic, new jersey and um and it'd be not uncommon for me to show up with a drawing and him going what you what and he'd walk out and knock on the neighbors' doors, like almost throughout the whole building. Wow. And look, look at what my son did. Look at what my, what my son did, you know? And I guess they may have given me some kind of, like, uh, positive feedback, you know, mm-hmm. in, in, in that, that wow, I, this thing that I'm doing is affecting uh, someone that I love, you know? Um, and he's, you know, he's reacting to it. And, and it was a way of connecting. And it was something that I just kept doing. And then w- one of the things that happened there, throughout those years, and I, uh, it actually happened quite into my adulthood until the last uh, decade or so is um, we moved around a lot mm-hmm. and um, uh, I remember clearly moving into a, a new school district and um, sitting down this is in uh, now in uh, Union City New Jersey and I would I remember mm-hmm. walking into um, into this school Edison school and sitting down this was the fifth grade and it was in the morning and everyone, you know, did the whole like, oh, welcome, John, our new student, blah, blah, blah. So I sat down and let me tell you, I started sketching. And by lunchtime, I already had my group of friends that would last for years, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. And it wouldn't be the first, the first or last time that that happened where I would just, all right, I'm in a new situation. So, all right, I'm just drawing. And I don't, at the time, it wasn't conscious. It was just like, this is what I do. Like, it's just what I do. And there's a bunch of other little stories here and there. Like, I remember learning about Picasso. Um, uh, I don't know what grade. You know, I was, this is now another city that I mostly grew up in in New Jersey, from North Bergen. And, um, and um, I come home, and it was uh, like, I was so excited that we just read about uh, 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 this artist, young this artist uh, Picasso and I was telling my mom 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 you know in Spanish uh, uh, I said the próximo Picasso <laughs> and my mom was laughing you know she was like oh yeah you're gonna be the next Picasso <laughs> and I remember it's funny because I'm not I'm not gonna say it, I'm, I'm I'm not a fan of his work um, I, I, I we could probably go hours and hours about uh, about you know, how I feel about that kind of work and that, you know, if you need to explain it, then uh, I don't know, there, there's an issue there. But anyway, um, what I fell in love with is this, uh, what I remember is something about him and his father in a studio, mm-hmm. you know, and, and him working at something in the studio. And it wasn't the final result that I was impressed with. Uh, because certainly, we, I, you know, Picasso when he was eleven and twelve, oh yeah, for sure, you know. Um, but it was this this idea, this experience, this process he's going through in a in a studio, you know. And I think that's what uh, what enamored me, and, and I always I, it always stuck to me. It always stuck with me. You know, it was like yeah, that, awesome. that, that. You know, so that's that's little John, I guess. You know. <laughs> little um, John. And if I could continue, Middle John, uh, uh, it, 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 was, it was always a struggle to decide to do this for a living. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I went to every <laughs> college you can think of, uh, up in the Northeast, even to, even to Florida. Um, um, I always laugh because I think I could fill out all of this paperwork with FAFSA and all this paperwork that you have to fill out, fill out to get into school. And, and I probably had half a dozen majors um, before <laughs> I decided on this thing that I majored in and I'm not too impressed with the, oh, I shouldn't say that, but uh, anyway. Tell the um, truth, man. You tell the truth. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, listen, it's true. I'm not it's, impressed. I'm with, predicting it here. Within the next 10 years, we're going to have a big, huge 
college bubble. It's just ridiculous, but go on. Yeah. Oh, I agree. Uh, again, uh, another no. subject we could probably talk about forever. And I wound up teaching in the colleges <laughs> for a while. So like, I'm the helpful share. I can, uh, we can talk about that all day. Um, but there was this feeling of uh, like with art and I don't, I don't mean to, to have like a sob story or anything like that, but with this idea of the belief I thought was that you had to come from a well-to-do uh, background mm. to practice this thing. Mm-hmm. And it's clearly not true, but it was a belief that I had for such a long time that mm. I didn't believe in being an artist. I didn't, I was like, what, what do you mean? What does this art, artist, uh, being an artist mean? I didn't, I didn't understand that. So I, and, and I, I had great advice from a loving family the, that basically said, oh, you want to be an artist? Yeah. Uh, how about doing that on the weekends? How about doing that at night? You know, and, and it is great advice. I didn't follow it, but it's great, <laughs> great advice, you know, awesome. and I understand where it came from because the idea in those words were always, look, you're not rich enough to hang out and go buy expensive colors and paint. And then what you got to, what are you going to do with this work? Like, you know what? You think someone's going to buy it? Like, who do you know growing up that buys art? And it's true. I didn't grow up with, with going to friends' houses that there was artworks, uh, you know, on the wall or anything mm-hmm. like that. There was music, I guess, but not, you know. So I understood that. Uh, but it was this drive, I guess, that, it's, that has been instilled in me from, you know, the Little John experiences, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so... Uh, so I was going to all these colleges, uh, literally transferring, dropping out, you know, struggling. Uh, my grades were okay, but like struggling in that I didn't, I didn't like what I was doing. I didn't, uh, I didn't know what I was doing in many ways. You know, I'm a youth, I guess. You know, it's just like it, uh, I was struggling with that, and you know, somehow, some way, and I, and around, um, I'm in New York City at the time, and I was like, you know what? I want to start taking classes at this. Uh, this art students league. Let me see what this place is all about, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I go and, um, and you know, the, 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 the process is you have, you know, you kind of look through artists work and then you find out that you could study under these particular artists. And, and I couldn't believe that system worked because I, you know, I was taking drawing classes in my colleges and all those stuff. And it wasn't like that. It's everything was based on some kind of scheduling, or if you, if it fits towards your major, and all this mm-hmm. kind of like wacky stuff. This was so simple, and I still to this day love the system in that you went there, you chose the artist you wanted to study with, and if there's space, you pay for very small tuition, minuscule compared to what colleges cost, uh, and you're getting focused attention. And not only that. You weren't going to school, oh, you know, twice a week for an hour and a half or whatever the classes. Mm-hmm. Were. It wasn't that silly stuff. It was, it was five days a week, four <laughs> hours or eight hours a day, you wow. know. And um, so I found this job in um, in Thirty Rockefeller in New York City, and uh, that's on Forty whatever Forty whatever Street, you know, uh, and Forty Ninth Street, and um, and. I was secretly studying at the Art Students League. And why do I say secret? It's that I didn't, I didn't boast about it. I didn't, you know, I didn't talk about it, mm-hmm. especially to my family. Mm-hmm. And uh, the job that I had was uh, I would uh, walk, uh, work from 4 p.m. to 12 a.m. So you know, classes were early. You know, so I would, I would, uh, I would you know, get up for work and leave you know, really early and, you know, I remember my brother one time saying, like, what the hell are you doing? You don't start till four. And for like almost three years, it was like, you know, you kind of mumble like, oh, I'm blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, like you're walking out the door. Oh, I, overtime. I'm going to do overtime. You know, stuff like that. And, and it was a, I, I felt that I had to do that. Even mm-hmm. though, even at the time while I was studying, and I was studying under um, incredible artists at the time, um, I, he actually just passed away uh, mm. months ago, and I'm shocked uh, by that because, uh, well, whatever. Uh, but Peter uh, Peter Cox, um, 
I mean, I was studying anatomy and uh, anatomy, uh, you know, drawing anatomy. Uh, hmm. And even How do you spell that, his last I, name? Uh, C O X. Was he C-O-X. related to Kenyon Cox? I don't know. No, okay. he wasn't. No. Um, uh, but who knows? No, I never ever tried to put that together. So who knows? I doubt it, though. I doubt it. Hmm. Um, he was awesome. Like his lectures, like, were fascinating, you know, just watching him you know with pastels and large humongous panels mm. put these uh, these these uh, body parts together you know from the bone all the way up to the skin you know it's incredible and um and it was i wasn't planning on being an artist at the time i, I, I didn't i didn't know what that meant at all actually mm. um until i'll tell you this like when the uh we had a little show that we put together and i remember i had drawn these um we have these great models, these dancers, and I drew these uh, male, uh, 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 um, these legs of a very muscular, incredible legs of this male dancer, and uh, that you know, a, a little a profile, a male profile that I that I drawn that he chose. He says, "Yeah, yeah, you should you should put that in the in the in the show." And I was like, "All right, cool." And while we're putting up the show, I remember him saying, "You know." Um, you're all invited to come to an opening. And I, these are words that I didn't understand at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, uh, opening, what, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, you know and, and it's a show uh, to go see his work. And I, of course, want to see his work, you know? Um, so I'm like, yeah, all right, cool. So I was telling him, ribbing my friend. I'm like, hey, let's, let's go to this show. And we we're, were both kind of lost. And like, what does that mean? Like, do we have to pay to get in? Like, is there a dress code? Like, we didn't understand anything yeah. about we had no idea what it meant to be an artist at all. And I remember the day showed up and, you know, we went and it was on uh, 57th street there. And, um, um, uh, I think it was a modern and modern gallery and we had to take an elevator and we were mm-hmm. totally lost. Like we didn't understand, like if we had to pay some, literally we had cash with us in case we had to pay for a ticket to work Cause we you guys, had no You guys idea. didn't enter in dressed like dumb and dumber, did you? Oh, we probably did. <laughs> I don't even remember what I was. <laughs> I really don't even remember. But I remember we walk, we walked in, and oh man, like oh, like like punch you in the gut. Great, like paintings, like paintings that are just like like I, I felt this incredible like prickly, you know, my hair, the back of my neck standing up, like pretty much mm. the whole time I'm there, and and like I remember. Kind of sweating and like, and there was all kinds of emotions because I was just like, "Wait a minute, what is what? Like, who are all these people? Like, looking at this work and and not only that, like, I felt this incredible sense of like, wait, this guy, this is this guy, he's teaching me how to do this, mm. and, you know? And I didn't, I still don't know why I'm doing it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I'm still like, oh my god, like I can't believe this, you know? Like, you know. I'm learning from this guy and, and, but who am I? You know, I'm, you know, sort of a kind of poor kid from, you know, Hudson County, New Jersey. Like, yeah, there's, you know, like I have no business doing this thing. No one knows that I'm here, you know, like, um, I didn't know what to do with this stuff. And then uh, to, to, to kind of, I guess, tie it all back, you know, and, and it, me able to give myself permission to get into Indeed. this. Uh, yeah was that I'm walking around with my friend and there's these red dots everywhere. Mm. No clue what red dots meant at the time. I was like, what's, 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 what is this? He's what is this red curry. Dot? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what, what are these red dots? I don't get it. Like, what are you, like, we literally, like, I remember asking people, like, what, what does that mean? And like, again, I, I, I always love, uh, I guess one aspect of myself that I, I, I think I do like uh, and it's very easy to hate ourselves for many things. I know that. But one of the things that I do like about myself is that I do have this curiosity. Mm-hmm. I, I don't care uh, how dumb I may look when I have a curiosity. You know, like, if I don't know what th- this thing means, I'm going to ask, like, well, what is this? What does this mean? What is that? And, it, you know, I wasn't embarrassed about things like that. And I remember asking and, you know, my friend kind of told me, too, are you like, you don't give, be all judgmental. Like, no, man, whatever. Like, what does this mean? What is it? Excuse me. What does this red dot mean? And 
And this woman was like, oh, those are sold, honey. <laughs> like, really? Like, yeah, yeah, they're sold. Like, really? And so <laughs> we found out that there's a book that had all these corresponding red dots, uh, you know, a list. They're like, I've got a list, you know? And I see these red dots, and I'm just like, wait a minute. They're like, what? How much? <laughs> You know, and believe me, the last thing I come from is uh, is a, a community that bought art. Yeah. And if we did, it was probably a poster with you know like Lamborghinis and little electric lights. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure that the rights of one of those paintings probably would have bought like two or yeah. three cars. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. <laughs> exactly. You know? And I was like, Maybe what? different colored like, doors, but, it, you know. Go like, on. back then, I would have been happy making, like, $10,000 a year. Like, it, it, and to me, that would be like, wow, I'm awesome, you know? Um, and this is, uh, by the way, this is, like, late 90s. Uh, like, this is probably 1998, 1999, that era, that era maybe. Or yeah. So, maybe nowadays, maybe. it would have been, like, $7,000 a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. But his, his prices were like astronomical. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. First uh-huh. of all, Peter Cox. Love the guy. But he's not a household name. He's not Picasso. He's not Van Gogh, right? Mm-hmm. He, he's, mm-hmm. not, he's not these artists. And he's alive. Well, I'm sorry to say not now. But, but he was alive. Mm-hmm. And like he's making a living at this thing. Like wow. it... it it was a dawning. It was, it was an incredible, powerful uh, show uh, for me. It's like, I, you know, I, I checked his ears to make sure he had all his ears. And like, you know, is there any drama about him? You know, like, no, it was just, he was a working artist. He checked and his that, ears. Yeah. <laughs> and just got that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that planted the seed um, for this hard head of mine. You know, that planted the seed to, you know what? Maybe I could pursue this. And I think I de- since then I developed a, a sort of, um, uh, I, I think maybe in personality, I think I developed a sense of, uh, I think it might look outwardly stupid or lazy or ignorant. Okay. Um, if that makes any sense. Because... I knew that not only was I dealing with the judgment of my background or where mm-hmm. I come from, mm-hmm. but I felt that I was also dealing with it with people that actually loved me, that, that cared about me, that wanted me to succeed in something and to, you know, be able to provide for myself. And, yep, yep. You, know, you know, and so I felt like I, I, you know, here's a common scenario. Hey, you got a good job yet? No, I got to go work on my resume. But instead of working on my resume, I just walk into the studio and I would paint. And you, know? you felt like you were living a lie, huh? Absolutely. Because Absolutely. You literally were living a lie because yeah. to, to, to protect the relationship with your family, you didn't yeah. want to have to have that energy stirred up. You just wanted to enjoy them. So you couldn't yeah. really present yourself honestly to them. Or it would turn into a conversation about, you know, basically you being a loser or failing or whatever yeah. it might be, right? Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And, and, make, and it makes sense, man. I mean, it really does totally. make sense. Because it comes like, from people who love you. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's not well, not only that, but, but, but not only that, we also see a lot of uh, well-meaning uh, uh, people that, you know, there's, there's a part of the story that, I'm, uh, that I need to put in there because it's, it's, it's I think, the key to all of it, it's one thing, like I, I knew a kid uh, who wanted to be a, a professional football player, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and he was a big guy, you know, a big guy, like, you know, he had kind of, you know, the, the stature, you would say, you know, and um, and like a year or two would pass and I would see him and I'm like, hey, how you doing? Like, are you working out? And he's like, no, no, no. And I was like, oh, you're not. Okay. So what's, what are you doing? What are you, what's your plans? He's like, oh, I'm going to play pro football. And I'm like, like in my head going, dude, you haven't lifted a weight in two years. You haven't, you haven't done the work for it. Mm-hmm. And you're expecting this thing to happen. So of course, you know, I, in my mind was like, well, the logic doesn't, there's no, there's, this is not happening. You're not doing it, you know? And I, I wouldn't say that to him, but you know, 
And so the key of what I'm saying is that you have to do the work, man. Like you yeah. got to do the work. You can't, you can't just go, oh, I'm going to be an artist. No. So, yeah, so getting back to the story with uh, Peter Cox, it's like, I, I, I felt that I was like, okay, all right. It, it, even if I aim low as an artist, I, and at the time, I think that's, that would, I, I would have, I was so humbled in this idea of like, if I could just sell half the work or, 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 or just, you know, a quarter of what this artist could do, I'd be happy. Mm-hmm. And so in order for that to happen, I knew that my skill set had to improve. And, and I remember leaving 57th Street in New York City, you know, I think it's the M Gallery or M Modern Gallery, whatever it was. Um, I remember that, that I was determined. I was like, okay, then I need to get better at this. And I doubled down at um, my education. Like uh, I, would, I would go more. And mm-hmm. I started studying with, I studied with Peter Cox and then I studied with, uh, um, uh, uh, oh boy, oh, I feel so bad that uh, uh, Sherry, uh, oh boy, Sherry Cammy, uh, drawing uh, with Sherry Cammy. And then uh, life happened. I moved to Florida. I went to school. I thought that I needed an, a, a degree. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that's part of my uh, conflict of, you know, my family and thinking, oh yeah, you need a degree to be official, to be stamped an official artist, I guess, which is uh, incredible, incredibly silly to think about. I think, uh, yeah. even though I've been a, a teacher for a while and I'm no longer a teacher, but, um, you know, I, I'm kind of shooting myself in the foot in, the, in a way by saying, you know, no, you no, don't, no, no. Need- there's, there's a difference. Hold on. There. Yeah. There's a difference between, I think it was Einstein who said, don't let schooling get in the way of your education. What you went to, what you went after, like a hunter, was an education. Right. 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 The mentality that your family had was you have to go to school, you have to go through that system. Right. Yeah. And, you you and had to get the quote unquote certified. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. And, it's, and that's and exactly what Your I'm, certification is. is are you an asshole or are you not an asshole? <laughs> right. Personality. Right. Can you deliver on the work portfolio? Right. right. You know, and do you have some sense of presentation and sales skills? You know, I mean, outside of that, what else do you need? You know, right. I, and, I, and I tell, I, I've been telling for years, my, the, the students that I've had is, um, look, it doesn't matter where you went to school. It doesn't matter. Uh, none of that matters. What matters is the work. Yeah. No, no. I, I've never had a collector ask me, Hey, uh, where'd you go to school? Unless it was just to make conversation while I'm running the credit card, you know. Um, <laughs> it, it, it was never. That's it, awesome. Yeah, no, it was never like an issue. It's like, who cares where you went to school? What, what we care? What uh, uh, even me as a consumer of art is, I care about the work. I could care less where the, the person went. And yeah. And studied. I mean, it's fun to know. It really is fun to learn about you know some of these artists that. You know, you, you get to hear some of their story, and, and that's great. I, I think that's gravy. That's wonderful, you know. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, what matters is the work. It's not the damn schooling, man. Um, but anyway, I, I came down here, and um, uh, when I first moved here to Florida, um, in the beginning, I would still drive back up to New York City and, and still take classes. And mm-hmm. I was up taking some painting classes with uh, Mary Beth McKenzie, um, and she was awesome. <laughs> She was so awesome because um, she taught me something that, that to this day, like it's, it's so important to me in that I would start a painting and she'd come around and go, okay, great. Now, scrape it off and start again. And start again. And I'm like, what? What do you mean? She's like, yeah. And I would do that for, for a summer, you know, and like I would show up, I do this painting, I start the painting and by the end of the summer, the amount that I advanced in the beginnings of paintings was astronomical just by her making me, all right, now scrape it down, start again, scrape it down, start again. And it gave me that sort of, I don't know if the word is looseness, but this, this fearlessness in starting a work, you know, Mm. going back to Jordan Peterson, uh, Peterson, it's like, this is chaos, right? Uh, I'm starting from chaos. I'm starting from, there's nothing on the canvas. There's zero there. And I'm going to start with a few marks. And these marks are kind of chaotic, but they have some control in, in where they're going to lead to, which is more of a, 
order, right? It's a, mm-hmm. it's a face, it's a person, it's a muscle, it's a, it's a color on a car, it's a cloud, it's a, you know, all, mm-hmm. all those kind of things, you know? So, um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, th- that's sort of my, my middle story, <laughs> middle, middle John story. Uh, middle John story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's an incredible story, man. And the value that that has just brought to, I'm almost certain to anyone who's listening to this uh, conversation, that was incredible. And I have to give you uh, compliments, man. You're an incredible storyteller too. Uh, you know, is that a gift that you got from your dad as well? Uh, I didn't know I, I was. Uh, I could tell stories. No, I no, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you know, I, it's funny. I, I was a, uh, I was extremely shy, growing up. Um, and uh, I remember I was a, uh, I had to get out of that shyness because I became a. I was a security officer at an emergency room of a hospital for some years, my early twenties, hmm. and um, security guard. Meaning, I gotta, I gotta throw people out. I have to tell people to bounce from the hospital. <laughs> yeah, I had to deal with these emergency situations. There's been, you know, uh, there's quite a few stories I could tell you about people that came in and they were in their right state of mind. And uh, I had to uh, learn to talk <laughs> quickly. I had to learn how to. So, so I, 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 uh, I, if I, if I could tell a story, and thank you for that, because I didn't know I could. Uh, it, I'm going to chalk it up to those situations where I needed to talk and uh, get my ideas across uh, uh, quickly. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, you got some good training there yeah. then. <laughs> ah, yeah, that was, that was some intense stuff. Mm-hmm. That was great, uh, John. So, you know, when I was asking you earlier about what kind of advice you would bring to, a, to another artist, and you kind of mm-hmm. touched on that about the work ethic. Um, yeah. Yeah, like like as not 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 as the ethic in terms of uh, someone who's learning in terms of a student, but as a working artist, because that's what you are. Um, mm-hmm. Like, yeah. how how does that play? Like, what kind of advice would you give to a working artist on on what it means to work? Uh, well, it, it you know um, I've had friends and strangers even say, "Oh, how nice it is that you could follow your passion." And I, I don't buy into that. I don't buy into this idea of this passion. It, it, it might be, it, 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 I, it, but it's not for me to even think about that. It's a passion that it's mm-hmm. something that I, it, you know, like, it, it, you know, this is like, like the work. fuzzy feelings of it is what motivates you throughout the day. And it's just this constant fuzzy feeling, like almost like when you're in, in the beginnings of, of falling in love with somebody, you just, in this yeah. oh giddy type of romantic love feeling, right? Uh, I think that's what a lot of people mean by you know when they say right. passion, they think oh it's like being right. in love with with what you with right. what you no. do. No, no, and no. It's, it's more like being, being married, committed. <laughs> exactly committed. Yeah, it's more like being married for fifty years, which I'm not yet. But it's more like being married for fifty years. The romance is it's there, you know. But there's this. Um, I feel like I approach this with this more practicality. It's not to say that there's no magic to this thing. It's not to say that there's no uh, otherworldly, like, uh, you know, like this, this, this incredible feeling. Like, but I feel like that comes, that comes first. Mm-hmm. In other words, like this, this gestation period that I have with the, the, the work that I want to create, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's in my head. It's, it, it, it every day it's kind of swimming in, in, in me and there's you know it ebbs and flows and i look at a sunset or it's raining and it's raining on my windshield and there's this this the, the but in florida you have this you know one street could be it could be raining on one street and the sun is out exactly. on the other side. it's, it's, it's this beautiful contra- <laughs> contrasting uh-huh. you know you know so uh, it, you know I, I i i get it i get that that's where i might say okay there's that quote unquote passion right Mm-hmm. And that comes before the work, but the work itself, the work is work. It's mm-hmm. just work. It's, I don't, I'm not necessarily enjoying myself or not enjoying myself. It's work like any other job. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's all right. This is what I do. 
I've decided to do this thing. I'm going to create this painting. All right, I'm going to do this thing. And certainly in the middle of a painting, sometimes you do feel like you, you need that, that passion again. Mm -hmm. And so I have no problem uh, uh, turning the painting uh, and, and making it face the wall for a while. Heck, there was one that I made it face the wall for four years hmm. until, until like literally it was facing the wall. I, I had no idea what, because something about it, there was no, there was something about the, the work that I was just, uh, I don't care. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe I, I could, uh, it's the, um, uh, oh gosh, I should, let's see if I can remember the title of that painting. It's, uh, um, it's Winwood, uh, Winwood Sunset Roof. Uh, no, it's called, um, I don't know. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you guys my, my website and you'll, you'll, you'll see it. It's a, um, uh, oh my gosh, I can't believe I remember. Uh, it'll come to me. But that particular painting took me over five years to do because you know, I started it, I hated its guts, I turned it around and I went on with my, with my other paintings. You know? mm -hmm. And then one day I turned it around and I was like, oh, I see what it needs. Okay, it needs this, this, and this. Here it is. Let me, let me throw this idea out to you. Yeah. See, I, I, I believe that the, the, that the art calls us, right? That we're communicating something. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it may be that that you heard the call, you began it, but you weren't ready to, you know, to finish yeah. it because you just, you, I mean, five years, the difference of working, your skill, your insight, I mean, all, everything just elevates to a whole nother level into a very different frequency. And, and then maybe at that point, it, you know, yeah. the, the painting and you were, were, were in alignment that then you could actually... Yeah you know yeah. finish it yeah no you're right i mean uh, uh, there's a writer that i'm sure uh, you you probably heard of him uh steven pressfield that mm -hmm. writes all about this stuff you know like um uh, I, 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 i'm trying to remember some of the titles of his work but um yeah i mean if you look up steven pressfield he's um uh, he, he was the one who wrote writes a lot about this thing about working and things right um yeah working and it, it's it's yeah it's exactly what, what i'm talking about he it's calls it working. resistance like that uh, yeah, yeah 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 it's resistance and but also y you know you show up to work like that's what i do you show mm -hmm. up to work this is what i do uh you know unfortunately sometimes in the, in the arts what what could be a little uh discouraging is that you could do all this work and sometimes it just sits there yeah. And, you, you know, and that that's all about marketing and learning how to sell your work. And, and that's that's always difficult, of course. And I understand that. Um, and that's another aspect of our conversation that we can probably have forever. You know, it'll, it'll take a while. Um, but, yeah, that's, you know, it, it's a strange business. You know, you get in, you, you do this painting, you, you study for years and you, you work, 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 work. You get this painting out and who knows? Maybe it doesn't re resonate with anyone or, or maybe the right people haven't seen it or, or the economy is bad or whatever it is. So it's incredibly like, th this is a tough, uh, a tough field for sure uh, for a working artist. But at the end of the day, as far as advice is concerned, what matters is the work. You know, what matters is how good is the work. Um, and who judges that? Like who judges, you know, I mean, that's a toughie, you know, like who, who, who sets the, who sets the, the, the idea that that painting is great or, or good or, or mediocre, you know, that's, that's also another conversation because I, I still struggle with that, you mm -hmm. know, I just do the work, you know, and, and whether it's good or bad, I mean, some, some of my work I, I like, you mm -hmm. know, not, not that much, but I like it. And some of the work that I do, I'm like, oh man, like what, it's missing something and I don't know what it is, but yet some, Sometimes somebody might see it and go, oh, I want it. That's going to go, you know, I'm, that's going to be a gift for my daughter or that's going to be uh, something that's going to go up on my wall, you know? And I'm like, wow, okay. You know, like, like, again, it's almost like this thing of like, I, I am this medium, you know, exactly. like the work is coming through me and, um, and, and that's it. That's just it, yep. you know? Yeah. I always say that uh, the artist is the medium, not, not the materials that they use. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, um, you're right. Yeah. Um, that's cool, John. Very, very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, I have a billion other questions, but what I think maybe 
great is maybe um, we'll have you come back on the show and we'll, we'll, we'll expound on some yeah. other topics. Yeah, um, I love that. And, uh, but I want to bring Next this time, up. we got to do this. We got to do this face to face, man. Yeah. I need to, uh, <laughs> y- y- you know, you don't need, you don't feel like you need a little vacation to South Florida? <laughs> uh, yes, I do, sir. Are you, is it snowing up there right now? <laughs> it was snowing earlier today. I was going to take my <laughs> daughter to her lacrosse game and I had my jacket on, ready to walk out the door and uh, I got a call from her mom saying, they finally oh. canceled it. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, life, I'm right? committed it's to like... showing up for her and I was like, they, they yeah. got to cancel this thing. But, oh, um, you know what? I, I, I missed that opportunity to get to uh, get to meet you, man. Uh, uh, just a few months ago. Um, unfortunately, we didn't go, and uh, oh, so I'm still bothered by it. Uh, um, the uh, uh, Chatsworth uh, is it? Wait, Chatsworth? Um, um, where uh, is the wife's studio in uh, Brandywine? Brandywine. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, right, yeah, right. that's yeah. not too far from me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. You know. So. So. And I'm still, I need to go back. I haven't been there in, gosh, it's over 20 years maybe now that I haven't, no, not that long. Gosh, uh, it's about 15 years since I've gone to that museum. And I, I you know, I need that refueling. You know, I need to, I need to look at some great art and, uh, and the Wyatts are amazing. So. Exactly, exactly. They have a couple of Wyatts in the, the little museum near me. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so when you're coming up, do let me know and we'll get together yeah, or absolutely. I'm heading down there. Uh, I'll let you know. Um, It'd be great to look at art with, with you of all people, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, I, I don't it's know. It's an experience. I'm not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> it's an experience. Listen, listen, I know because the reason <laughs> I even know you now, uh, I have to share this with the listeners. Um, um, I remember just kind of putting around on the internet. And I came across someone analyzing, uh, I think it was, uh, uh, yeah, it was John Singer Sargent. It was a bedroom scene, I think. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, uh, there was a, I think, jean Leon uh, uh, Jerome painting, mm-hmm. maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was an Algerian scene or with, uh, with swords. And, and then oh, yeah. it was, yeah, and then it was a... Uh, Turkish centaur, uh, uh, century or something like yes, that. Yes, yes. And then there was another one, and it was all in a museum. And these are three, like, I think they were separate videos. And it all wound up being you. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? I like this guy. Who is this guy? <laughs> you know, and this is quite a, a few years ago now. You know, and this yeah. is actually before uh, uh, I even worked with you, actually. Like, um, even yeah. maybe a year or two before that. And then yeah. I just like, I stumbled across you again, and I was like, "All right, no, I need to, I need to get to, I need some information from this guy. I need to talk to this guy." You know, no, you've been, you've been, you've been instrumental, man. Uh, it, it, it's awesome that you're out there. Um, yeah, I remember yeah. I sent out an email on a little system I created called uh, the LPR uh, LPA system, where you basically create the uh, field or the outside of your composition based mm-hmm. on the lines that are within your drawing, right? So the, right. The, the outside of the border actually becomes an extension. It's actually an extension of the drawing itself. And I shared this. And then you went in and you were teaching that morning and someone had a problem and you're like, wait, let me see if it works. And you yes. did it and it, yes. And you called yes. me that day and enrolled. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh-huh. I have uh, I, I still have that drawing. As a matter of fact, I drew oh, a bunch really? of, That's awesome. yeah, I, I drew a bunch of boxes in the classroom. Uh, it was a demo and I was like, Hey, let me try this. Let me see where this, yep. That's right. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, that was a, it, it's weird when it comes to artists. I, you know, I had a friend once say to me, man, you, you gotta be like James Bond, right? <laughs> we were talking about dating actually at, at the time. <laughs> And I was like, ah, okay. I, I don't relate to James Bond. Maybe Zorro, but not James <laughs> Bond, right? Uh, and uh, and, and it kind of it was weird. It, it kind of irked me for almost two years, and um, like silently, you know, but not in a bad way. Just like, but why didn't I feel like I related to James Bond? Why? And that that's been eating at me. And then uh, it dawned on me, I'm not James Bond, like, <laughs> right. You know, there's like three major characters that I can think of in the James Bond series. It's James Bond who goes out and does the stuff, right? Do, 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 right, right, yeah. right. And then there's the lady who manages the whole thing. Like she's the one who, um, you know, organizes the, the, the tasks that he has to go do. And, and she d- takes care of the business, right? Right. 
And then there's the enabler. He's Money, Money Penny, Many Penny, Miss, yeah. Miss, or M, M no. M, uh, M, M, yeah. 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 And then there's Q. And Q okay. yeah. creates all of the things that makes James Bond, that yep. enables James Bond to actually win, right? James go, Bond would win on his own, but but right. Q does, he enables him to win in a way that's very sexy, very cool, <laughs> yeah. you know? And <laughs> And that's how I see myself. And I've always saw myself. Yeah. I remember when I was a little kid. Uh, when, I remember when I had my, my, my first real car, right? The mm-hmm. coolest thing about my car is I, I actually hooked up rockets to the car. So, what? <laughs> literally, like, I, uh, I remember going I to my friend's I don't know what state house. laws are in Pennsylvania. But. Exactly, right? <laughs> so I had, like, these, these buttons inside my car. And that when I would click it, like, rockets would shoot from underneath my car it was what? the cool, yeah, man. It was the cool. And then I had like these. Uh, I found this thing called a solar flare, right? And if you run a current okay. to it, 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 it you could light fuses and stuff. And so I, at the back of my car, I had um, a little smoke bomb. Well, they weren't little, but like smoke bombs. That uh-huh. I would, I would press a button, they would light up and they would roll out and like. Sm- it was the the coolest. What thing. the heck? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a crazy story, man. Yeah, yeah. I was going to put on the top of my car. The Remember back in the day when we had f- cameras that had the flashes in them, you know, and then you roll them, you know, like yes, you put the yes, film yes, in there. Yes, of course. Well, what I did is I, I took it apart and I was going to install in the top of my car a flash bulb, right? So that if <laughs> okay. at nighttime somebody was like high beaming me or or coming up on me or whatever, I could hit yeah. the button because you would have to charge the flash and you would hear the flash go, yeah. right? Man, that's a great and idea. Like a little photon, you know? Yeah. Right? Like it would, and they drive off and crash into a tree and then they go, like, who killed hey, this what? guy, right? But um, so, so it was crazy. Well, if they had the high beams at you, they probably deserve it. Exactly. No. How, how rude of them. I know. Uh, <laughs> But I remember <laughs> taking apart this um, f- uh, camera and I hit the little button and, and I heard it go, right? It charged up with this energy and then it slipped out of my hand and dropped and it hit my leg and it released the energy into my leg and my freaking leg went into this weird spasm like, oh my God, it was Whoa. the craziest, <laughs> weirdest thing ever. Whoa. And, <laughs> and so I was like, man, I shouldn't be playing with this stuff. <laughs> um, so, oh. but I, and I thought, man, like, I would have loved to like work for the mob or something to create like like <laughs> freaking mil- like weapon tree vehicles that look like. I remember, <laughs> this is so cool. I remember taking a pair of shoes and there was a a little toy gun that you had that could shoot out little like plastic things, uh-huh. and I and I took the casing off and I fi- I got the mechanism that was inside and I engineered it to go into the bottom of my shoes, and so. We had uh, like, you know, at the end of every school year when you're young, you have like those uh, like school Olympics and things like that. Sure, sure. So I was in this one race, and mm-hmm. so I put my, my 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 shoes on, and I'm running, <laughs> and I click the hill, and I shoot the guy behind me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I once had a, a my vice principal pull me in, and he said they used to call me Dino back then, and uh, uh, he's like Dino, you're, I, he's like. You're so smart with this stuff, but when? Why don't you use it for good? <laughs> <laughs> you are now, man. You are now, though. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, so I, I, when it comes to artists, I have this natural ability just to engineer tools and systems and different approaches to seeing art. You know, like the the art lineage thing that I do, where when you look at artists rather than seeing them all separated, if you look at them as a family tree, all of a sudden it all comes together, you know, 5,000 years of history, almost just, sure. and the whole world just gets sucked into one family lineage. And, um, right. and so, it, you know, with the gridding system, all these systems and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I realized like more, you know, more recently, like I'm not the James Bond. I'm not the guy the artist who's out there necessarily like on the front line, you know, right. I'm the guy behind them and right. I enable the guy on the front line to freaking win and, and do yeah. it in a cool way. You do. You so, do, man. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah man. It's, it's, well, John, it's, yeah. let me, uh, l- l- let's wrap up here, but I do want to ask yeah. you one question. Very, very important question. What's that? And everybody knows what's going to be coming. Oh, okay. 
what, what's what's your favorite food, man? <laughs> <laughs> favorite food? Wow. Yeah. Because hey, wow. man, the vision of this podcast, right? Uh-huh. Um, I had dreams about what I call the long table dream. It's this dream. Uh, I've had it since I was 14 and it has come into different iterations where ultimately it's just, it's this very long table where family and friends come together and they're dining at my table and we're mm-hmm. just discussing art and life and philosophy and deep things sure. and, and we're eating, you know? And so mm-hmm. um, I would, re- I remember while I was in Portugal last year, I was walking with uh, this wonderful artist and we were talking and she said, you know, you need to figure out how to, you know, talk for a living <laughs> like you know <laughs> and um and i wasn't sure if she was if that was an insult or a compliment or whatever but it it, it rung in me and and so i said well you know what when we do the podcast i'm going to base it off the dream because that makes sense so i'm bringing friends and, and and you know and artists together and we're talking about meaningful things not just uh you know how do you paint a picture but you know art and and life and so I want to end the conversation on food and, um, okay. Okay. you know, one day, one day uh-huh. we're going to invite a whole bunch of artists together. We'll, you know, maybe we'll record the show or whatever, but you know, we'll eat and have, uh, some incredible food in a great location. Great All conversation. Right. It'll be Done. one of those amazing moments in our Sounds life. Awesome. You know? So Sounds awesome. what, what's one of your favorite foods, man? Oh man. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, everything. Yeah, that's kind of my problem. No, <laughs> there is. Uh, oh no, no. Let me let me throw this. Okay, uh, because you're going to be on more than once. Let's start okay. with breakfast. Next time we'll go to a lunch, and then breakfast. we'll go to a dinner. Okay, so we're going to start with a a breakfast. Well, What's one of your what I'm going to say, I can have any time of the day for Fair sure. Uh, and it's uh, a little strange, I think, but um, so my wife is uh, from. Uh, from Argentina. Oh, uh, oh that's cool. Um, uh, so the land of meat <laughs> and oh. par- parrilladas, uh, um, and believe it or not, ice cream. Oh my God, I, not, I never had better ice cream in my life. Together uh, or separate? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the well, we uh, um, <laughs> uh, this will you probably be for another here. podcast. Okay. But I did win. Uh, I did win a painting. Uh, uh, I, I won a prize. That was an all expense paid uh, trip to Buenos Aires for two months and uh, with a studio, an apartment, and a show um, where I did some plein air work uh, down there. So that's and, how you got there? I, I mean, I saw the pictures and everything. Yeah. We talked that I didn't know you won a prize that got you there. Yeah, yeah. It was that's a prize awesome, that, that, yeah. dude. And so I took my family, like uh, our two kids. Uh, now it's going to be three, in a month yeah, or two. Congratulations. But, uh, Oh, thank you, thank you. But it was uh, our two boys, two little boys, and my wife, who's originally from there, mm-hmm. and uh, it was fascinating. But let me tell you, you said meat and ice cream together. Uh-huh. I got pretty damn close to, to having meat and ice cream. And specifically, I love, and I, I mean, I, I've known this food for quite a long time. I, uh, but, but recently, I, I love it. It has to be done in a particular way. But and it's gonna sound weird, but it's um, in Spanish. It's called molleja, uh, okay. and it's it's called sweet bre- it's sweet bread. So the glands um, that are of the animal. Um, uh, and if you may, if oh god, I've had it's crispy and it's just a big blob of fat, and it's just <laughs> crispy outside and kind of gooey, soft, thinner. Oh my God! And you put some lemon juice on that sucker. Oh boy, I that can eat that for so good. Lunch. Oh my gosh! And you prepare it. They're small, so you prepare, it and it's yeah. almost like, almost like popcorn for me. It's like, oh yeah, I'll have all of that, please. <laughs> oh, know? so it's basically um, like like deep fried fat, basically, right? Uh, yeah, it's on a grill. It's done okay, on the grill. Okay, okay, uh, okay, grilled fat. And, okay. And not everybody makes it the right way, you know, and. I, I had to find a certain place. Like my father-in-law is great at it, uh, where it's nice and crispy. It has to be nice and almost charred, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. almost to the point of charred, and uh, like it's soft. Oh, it's just. Oh, I'm a little hungry now. <laughs> oh. And yeah, ice cream. But 
I only found one place, and it's going to sound hoity-toity to say this, but I only found one place in the United States, and I haven't been everywhere. And I know there's a lot of good ice cream places uh, that I haven't uh, tried, but there's a, a little place in Brooklyn that I found that had this um, uh, butter-flavored ice cream. <gasps> yeah, it was my favorite ice cream is, is like oh, 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 either. Butter what pecan or butter brickle or butter, but it's yeah. that cre- that buttery creaminess to, to yeah. ice cream. Oh, yeah, it's slightly God. salty, slightly. Oh man, I could have that all. The time. Well, we gotta get together, man, because we gotta yeah. eat some some buttery ice cream <laughs> with some. Hey, you know what? Grill one of the best butter pecans. <laughs> one of the best butter pecans I ever had in my life. Actually, uh, uh, in my early twenties, I discovered. Uh, um, I discovered. Check me out. Uh, I went on a road trip Splurred. to. <laughs> New Hope, uh, New Hope, Pennsylvania, which I haven't been back since, uh, since in my early twenties. Oh, really? But, uh, New Hope, Pennsylvania. There's a butter pecan ice cream. I, I was it Amish, before. like Amish folk that made it? Was it? I like, don't think so, like, but I just remember it was ice cream shop after ice cream shop after yeah. ice cream shop on this one uh, one uh, drag there. That's uh, cool. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, ice cream and the kind of ice cream I had in, in Argentina was like I haven't found it except for that one place that was pretty close, but. Not that close. I mean, oh gosh. you know, I'll tell but you yeah. the, the one of the craziest ice creams I've ever had, and it happens to be one of the best ice creams I've ever had, was in, when I was in Puerto Rico, and okay. it was called uh, Mais. Mais. Oh yeah, uh, cool. corn, okay. corn ice cream. Ooh. I never even heard about. It. I mean, what the? What is? This? Oh, I might be going to Puerto Rico God. actually in a couple well, months. If you so. do, see, <laughs> yeah, I'm happy some for you. It. I only found it in one place, and it was like out in the ghetto, almost right. Okay, okay. and and it was like we were—I forget where the heck we were, but we were walking somewhere, and, and it was like some park, and then across the street was this little ice cream shop, and they had it, and they had like this little scoop with this really long handle, and they would dig down, but it was all like I guess homemade ice cream. And uh, one of them was made out of corn, and yeah, I was like, wow. "What? Oh wow!" But oh my god, it was, yeah, good. It was it insane. <laughs> so, um, yes, we will get together. Yes, yeah, John. and have some uh, sweet bread and, uh, uh, and ice cream, man. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Uh, cool, cool. If people want to get in contact with you, John, where where do they go? How do they get in, in touch with you, man? Uh, you gotta do the bat signal. No. Uh, <laughs> so you uh, awesome. <laughs> you can go to my uh, website, um, which is um, it's J Sanchez, uh-huh. uh huh, J S A N C H E Z, and dot. It's a it's a uh, fine art studio online uh, site. So it's uh, J Sanchez dot F A S O dot com. So cool. J Sanchez uh, at uh, wait J Sanchez dot F yeah Faso at uh, uh, dot com. Um, Oh yeah, you can email me, which is a uh, J Sansart, uh, J S A N Z. Oh, you can just email me through through my website. That cool. that'll be the, the easiest. And part. and what I'll do yeah. is I'll put the the website link with the notes, cool. um, so that as it goes out, everybody will have access to it. Uh, great. That was Appreciate really. It. Hey man, thanks for your time. It was a great conversation. Oh, thank and, you. And I'd thank love to you. Have you on a, a, another time as well. Absolutely, so. absolutely. I loved it. I loved it. All yeah. right. Thank have you, man. One. Yep. Take care. Ciao. All right. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Sayyida Habib. I'm an artist from Pakistan and um, wanted to say something about uh, Don's wonderful practice as a design and art consultant. I think it's a novel idea for artists who are living and working um, alone um, for, for them to have another pair of eyes to look at their work a bit critically and for allow them to look at their own work objectively, you know, to stand back a bit. Um, and to learn from each and every piece. Don has an incredible understanding of the des- design in terms of drawing and painting um, because back in the day when the masters used a certain type of uh, knowledge, which is not very freely available these days, um, to construct their work, and that's why they were able to construct such marvelous masterpieces. Uh, today, unfortunately, we don't have all that um, information available to us. And when I tried to learn from different books, uh, when I was trying to improve my uh, uh, my drawing, uh, it was often very difficult and very confusing because there's sometimes a lot out there, and it can really to apply that to your to to your design uh, can sometimes be very very daunting. So um, 
Don has um, an incredible uh, capacity to be able to uh, look. He's, he works on a grid system, and um, through those grids, you're able to um, look at your drawing and see how you can tell a story um, and get your message and communicate more effectively as um, a visual artist, get your message across um, and your feelings. So um, it's quite an effective way of uh, making artwork um, and uh, making great artwork, actually. I mean, he's been looking at um, master drawings and paintings now for a very, very long time, and he knows um, what is the stuff that they're made of, and he's, um, he can, he's, he's available and he's willing to share that knowledge with you so um, he's, it's, I think it's a great idea so if you're uh, looking to grow uh, as an artist and um, learn and um, explore the world then Don's your man so give it a go thank you bye in just 30 days the Core 80 experience teaches you to decode the intentional design underneath great masterpieces through video lessons, assignments, and feedback, you learn to recognize the underlining structures like thrust maps, echoes, and gamuts that give master compositions substance and gravitas. Knowing how master artists and illustrators compose their artwork unlocks your ability to give your artwork more meaning and energy. Enroll today and get a 7-day no-hassle money-back guarantee at Core80.com.